Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are a whole bunch of iPhone keyboard tips to help you type and manipulate text faster. So first, let's talk about typing periods. You can, of course, type a period by tapping the one, two, three button and then tapping period. But you can also do it by just double tapping the space bar and it automatically puts a period and then one space. Like with a lot of tips, if it's not working for you, you want to check in settings, then go to general and then scroll down to keyboard and go in there and look for a setting you may have turned off. For instance, at the bottom here, you've got the period shortcut. If you have that turned off, then double tapping space won't work. Now, if you need to type an accent mark or any common character variation, you can do that by tapping the letter, but holding it. So if you tap and hold E, you can see how you get all these different variations. And then you can select the one you want and then release and you get that accent mark or character variation. Lots of different characters have these, like here's for the O, here's for G, here's for N. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. Now, if you want to capitalize a word, you can do it by tapping the shift key there and then tapping the letter. But you can do it in a single motion by tapping and holding and then moving over to the letter and releasing. Notice that the keyboard doesn't have a caps lock key, but if you do want to turn on caps lock, you can do it by double tapping on the shift key there. And you can see now it changes to have this caps lock symbol there. And now you can continue to type in all capital letters. To turn it off, just tap once on that shift key. Now, if you want to type a number, you can, of course, tap the one, two, three key there and then type the numbers that you want. If you just need to type a single digit though, you can do it a similar way that I showed you for doing capital letters. You can tap and hold one, two, three, slide over to the number and release. And then it types the number and then goes back to the regular keyboard. Now for typing symbols, you can use a combination of two of the previous tips. One is, of course, you can go to the one, two, three key right there and you get a variety of symbols. But notice for a lot of them, you can tap and hold and you'll get variations like all the different currencies here. If you tap and hold the period, you can get an ellipsis. If you tap and hold the slash, you can get a backslash. Now you can also combine this with tapping the shift or number key and dragging. So you could be with letters here, you can tap and hold one, two, three, go over to say the colon and then release. You can also tap one, two, three, and then tap the other symbols key right here, hold, and then drag over to one of these and then release. Now, unfortunately, if the special symbol you want can't be found by tapping and holding a key on the keyboard, you can't really type it on the keyboard. The alternatives are to get third-party keyboards, which I'll talk about later, but you can also just copy and paste from somewhere else. For instance, you can go to this Wikipedia page for Unicode characters. And if you scroll down here, you'll find a ton of different Unicode characters, and you can even search this page and find the one you want. So you could just tap and hold to select this character here, for instance, and copy, and then tap here and paste to paste that character in. Now to type an emoji character, you would tap this symbol here at the bottom left. If you have more keyboards installed, you may have to tap it and hold and then switch to the emoji keyboard. And then you could go through the different types of emoji characters here and find one and just tap it to type it. But you could also tap here and then type to search for the character you want and then tap it to enter that. But you'll also get emoji characters as suggestions here if you simply type what you want. So for instance, if I were to type pizza here, one of the suggestions is the emoji character for that and it'll replace the word if I select it. So if you want to smile, you can type smile and you'll see you get different ones here. Tap it to replace what you typed with the emoji. Another thing you can do is if you go back to system settings and then into general and keyboards, go to text replacement. And here you can add text replacements where you have something you would type, the shortcut here, and then you could have what it's replaced with. So for instance, if you're always typing a certain emoji character, you can 
have something as a shortcut here, something you would never normally type, like maybe E followed by pizza, all in one word like that. And then here for the phrase, you could insert the character like that. Now when you type E pizza followed by a space or a return, it'll replace one with the other. But you could also have phrases that are really long, several words or even paragraphs of text that you paste in here. So if there's something you commonly type, you can add it here to make it easier to type the next time. In addition, you can enter in a phrase that isn't even a shortcut right here. So you could type something like this, which isn't a real word, all together, and don't even add a shortcut. Now I'll save this, and it will save here, and you'll see it here, but it just has itself as its own shortcut. What does this do? Well, it adds it to predictive text, kind of like adding it to the dictionary. So I start typing this word, and you could see it's going to appear here, so I can actually use it here. But better still, it's not going to appear as a misspelled word. Now this predictive text bar here is great and it will help you type faster if you remember to use it. But if you never use it and you want more space to be able to see the text, you could turn it off right here in the keyboard settings. So now you can see it's gone and I've got a little bit more room to see my note. Now if you type a word and maybe it's a special word like a name and it corrects it like that, you could get back the original word very easily by using the delete button here. And when you go back to the end of that word, you could see that it's got the original word there and you can tap this and it will put back that original word. Notice also while you're typing it in the predictive text, it's got the word that you're typing exactly as it is in quotes here on the left. So if that's your intention to use that word, simply tap that and it will accept the word and put a space. Now to delete any character you just typed, you can tap the delete key once. Tap it again and it'll delete the next one. Tap it again and it deletes the next one. But if you tap and hold, it will actually delete character by character and then start jumping word for word. So you can move a little faster. You can also simply select text to delete it. Now, if you tap once in your text, it's going to put the cursor there. But if you double tap on a word, it'll select the entire word. And if you triple tap on a word, it'll select the entire paragraph. Now that you have it selected, you can, of course, use all the things in the context menu here, but you can also tap the delete key to delete the entire selection or just start typing and it will replace the selection with what you're typing. Now, instead of tapping each individual letter on the keyboard to type, you can slide to type. So you just tap the first letter and then slide to each letter in the word. You could see it here. If I tap T and slide to H and then slide to E and release, I get the. And then if I tap Q and then over to U, I, C, and K and release, I get quick. I could always use one of the suggestions up here if it didn't get it quite right when I did it before. And you don't have to be perfect with this. It's going to try to look for the closest match. So even if you miss a letter or hit the letter next to it, quite often it's going to get it right anyway. Now there's also to make it easier to type on your iPhone while holding it with one hand. You can make the keyboard smaller and move it to one side or the other. Tap the button at the bottom left and then you see these two variations around the regular keyboard. So for instance, I can use this one here and you can see how it compresses the keyboard to the right. So if I'm holding the iPhone with my right hand, it's easier for me to reach all the keys with my thumb. You've got this little button here that you can tap to expand it or you could just go back in here and choose the regular keyboard. Now in the keyboard settings, you can go to keyboards here at the top. And by default, you should have your local keyboard and the emoji keyboard, but you could also add a new keyboard here and you could search for all of these different keyboards. So for instance, if I wanted to add, say a French keyboard, I could do that by selecting one of these. Let's add this. Now, if I wanna add it as a separate keyboard, I choose add new keyboard and then I choose one of the variations here like this one and done. Now when I want to switch keyboards, notice how the little smiley face is gone from the bottom left. It's now right here, but I can tap and hold and I could still choose the English keyboard 
in the emoji keyboard, but now I have this new one and I can switch to that. A quick tap will switch between them. Choosing the right keyboard not only makes the keys match what you expect, but also the predictive text and spelling will match that. Let's add the same one, but this time I'm going to add to the English US keyboard. So it's going to have a bilingual keyboard. So now I can see I just got this one keyboard that's English and French here. And the idea behind this is that I can type in either language and it will look for spellings and predictions for both languages. And notice with this bilingual keyboard, I can select the actual layout I want. So if I wanna choose one of the French layouts instead of one of the English ones, I can. Now you may notice when I went to add a keyboard, in addition to all the languages here that are built into iOS, you've also got third-party keyboards that will appear here if you have an app installed that includes one. So the way to get third-party keyboards is to add the app for that keyboard and it automatically adds the keyboard listed here. You often need to run the app and maybe go through some steps in order for it to appear here first. If you go to the App Store and search for keyboard, you'll come up with a whole bunch of different apps that add third-party keyboards to your iPhone. Now for editing, there's a bunch of different things you can do. For instance, of course, you could tap at a particular spot to move the cursor there. But if you tap and hold, you'll get this little magnifier here so you can more precisely place the cursor exactly where you want. There's also the trackpad mode. You go down to space, tap and hold space, and all of the letters go away. And now you can drag around on the keyboard like a trackpad, and you can see how I could position the cursor this way. Now when you select some text, you can, of course, use the context menu here to cut, copy, and paste. But you could also use three fingers and pinch inward to copy. Watch what happens when I do that. You could see the word copy appear at the top there. Now I can go somewhere else and I can use three fingers and spread them apart and it will paste like that. And you can see the word paste appeared at the top there. You can also select large section. I'm gonna triple tap here to select all of this. And with that selected, you can tap and hold and then drag this section to another part of your document. Now using undo and redo is a big part of editing text. So you could change something or maybe delete something and then decide that you wanna undo it. One way is to simply shake your iPhone like this. And you could see you got a prompt there for undo typing. And now you can tap undo and it works like that. Another thing you do is use three fingers and swipe. Swipe to the left and it will undo like that. Swipe with three fingers to the right and it will redo. Now there are more keyboard settings than what appear in settings general keyboard. For instance, if you go down to sounds and haptics, you could go look for the keyboard feedback section and you could turn on or off sound, whether you hear an audible click when you tap on a key, and also whether or not you get actual haptic feedback, you feel a vibration when you tap a key. Under accessibility, there are some things that you could find as well. There's hover text. Now we're not gonna use hover text. That will make text for reading appear larger. Except we're gonna go down to hover typing, and we're gonna turn that on. And what happens now is that whatever you're typing will also appear here. And the idea is to make it easier for you to see what you're typing. Back here in settings, you have a lot of control over the font and the size and the color and all of that. So you can make it much bigger in that little display area than the document you're actually typing into. Still in accessibility under display and text size, you could choose bold text. Now that makes text bold in a variety of different places. And one of those places is the keyboard. So notice how you've got bold letters here in the keyboard, but you have to put up with them everywhere. You can't just turn it on for the keyboard and not everywhere else. At the top level of accessibility, if you go into keyboards and typing, you'll also find access to hover typing here. And in addition, you'll find typing feedback. Go into here and you can get feedback as you type. So you can have each character spoken to you. You could have words spoken to you and it could even speak the suggestions. So for instance, if I turn on speak words, then as I type this, with each word I type, I get is. feedback. This can help reduce errors. And here back up a level, there's also show lowercase keys, which should be turned on by default. 
If I turn it off, then notice the keyboard shows all capital letters, even if I'm typing lowercase. So using this shift key here doesn't actually change the keys at all, which can make it a little tricky. But if you have difficulty seeing the letters on the keyboard because they're lowercase, this is handy. And by the way, a lot of the other things here in keyboards and typing have to do with connecting a Bluetooth keyboard to your iPhone, which you certainly can do. You can use one of Apple's Bluetooth keyboards, but you can also get these portable ones and then pair them with your iPhone and then type on a real keyboard rather than the virtual one. And then you've got a variety of different settings here that apply to hardware keyboards. Now, a new feature in iOS 18 is called Math Notes. And it's usually used in an app like Notes here to do math equations and get the results. So for instance, I could type one and then plus and five. And if I type an equals, I'll see the answer. And if I use return here, the answer sticks in there. I could even come back to this equation here and change it like this and it will update. Now, despite this being called Math Notes, it actually works in all sorts of other apps. For instance, here I am in Mail, and I can use it here to do calculations as well, like that. Now, a few last tricks. One is that if you need to get rid of the keyboard, say you wanna just read the text now, you're not adding anything new to it. To do that, you swipe down in the middle of the screen, not over the keyboard, that won't work. But if you start here and then you swipe down, you could see the keyboard goes away. To bring it back, just tap in the text as if you're going to type. And don't forget about dictation. It's this little button here at the bottom right. You don't have to dictate everything. You could just turn it on for a quick sentence and then continue typing. You can even type while you're dictating. So keep that in mind, especially if you're getting frustrated with typing out a large passage of text, it could really speed things up. And finally, if you have an iPhone with a larger screen, so this doesn't work on all models, just the ones that have larger screens, you can turn your iPhone horizontally and then you get a larger keyboard. So if you find it a little easier to type on this wider keyboard with larger keys, you can do it this way. It's something easy to forget about, and certainly it makes it harder to view what it is that you're typing because there's less space here, but it certainly can help move things along if you've got a lot of text to type. And keep in mind, it may not work in all apps. Some apps are locked into portrait mode and won't go into landscape. So I hope you found these iPhone keyboard tips useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.